Hello everyone, at the Chair of the Bloody Point. Today we're taking another look at Reign of Dwarf. Uh, recently went uh, onto Steam in early access as of November 30th. Uh, Reign of Dwarf, uh, something I played in the past quite a bit during its uh, testing phases. And about three weeks ago it went uh, on Steam. It's in early access. The uh, game is a survival MMO, uh, very much PvP focused with some PV, PvE, of course. Uh, also, as you can see from the image on screen, includes sieging. The uh, aesthetic is pretty cool. Uh, dwarves are a theme that hasn't really been explored much in this space. The best way to think of this, I suppose, is, is kind of like uh, a dwarven rush, rust rather. Um, there is one important difference in that you can build underground. You have the ability to uh, modify the terrain, uh, dig tunnels, uh, moats. You can really terraform quite extensively and this uh, plays into the uh, sieging element of course so here we are in the starting area the starting area in this EA released is uh, different from what it was in the testing uh, in the testing you if you played you recall you started on a beach now you start in these uh, particular point of interests which include some uh, chests with items here so I did start naked but I was able to get myself some armor uh, you can see uh, another player, players in Reign of Dwarf. When you log out, you actually remain in the world. Your body's in world and asleep, and you can be attacked, damaged, and killed, as well as looted. Uh, this guy had armor, which was um, not as good as the stuff I looted, so no point in killing him. I'm just going to leave him be. So I got myself uh, some shoulder pads and uh, a melee weapon, a stone war axe. Items in... Reign of Dwarf are uh, like many uh, survival games in that they progress through tiers, uh, better better quality items, uh, better materials. They also uh, can be produced um, through better quality workstations, which helps you make the better items out of better raw materials. Here I'm just checking some of the items, or rather the options. The, uh, the game does provide for a, a streamer mode, so if you're a streamer and want to play, you can hide some information. Uh, there's a spectating mode as well. I don't, uh, I'm not streaming, so I'm not too concerned. Of course, people sometimes when I make a video will visit the base that I've not hidden the location of, but I'm not too too bothered by that. There is no map. Uh, that's one of the um, dev decisions. It's not a, you know, a oversight. The, the dev specifically wants the game to be uh, difficult, and especially in the context of PvP. So the lack of a map helps accomplish that. There is also, uh, you know, no real way to know where you are on the map. You kind of have to navigate using traditional methods, you know, uh, land, uh, landmarks, cardinal directions, north, south, etc. So I'm exiting the uh, starting POI. You'll notice it's nighttime. The game does have a day-night cycle. Uh, the nighttime in the EA release is uh, much different from what it was during testing. It was quite dark during testing. Now this is a bit more forgiving. Uh, you can see someone with a torch out from quite quite a distance away, so that, that still exists, but, but you can at least, you know, see where you're going. Uh, so my first uh, objective is going to be to collect the resources needed to start uh, building a base. Currently, uh, if I were to die, I would not be able to control my respawn point. I would just spawn in a random part of the map, which if I were carrying things, uh, you know, would be bad because I would lose them. When you when you die, you, you do drop your loot, equip gear, and inventory. So don't want to do that. So my, my first immediate objective is to control my respawn, and that's done by crafting a bedroll. And a bedroll requires a specific um, resource, which is cotton and cotton doesn't occur everywhere. So that's my first objective. Collect enough cotton to craft a bedroll. The bedroll requires 200 cotton. So that's uh, 10 plants, it's 20 each. Not too bad, at least I believe it's 20 each. Perhaps it's 10 each, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, I do not have a pick, so I'm punching the resource node as is typical in many survival games. Um, once you have the appropriate tool, so you see I have an ax, It'll increase the yield that you, the amount you get for each strike on the resource node, and of course speeds up the process as well. Uh, I just heard an animal. 
So the other resource that I need to focus on getting in the beginning here is, aside from cotton, is animal fat. And the reason for that is in, in the game, as I mentioned, you can build bases underground, but that requires you to have a specific tool, the digging tool. And the digging tool is gated by a particular workstation. And the workstation is gated by a material. And that material is gated by a refining station, which requires animal fat. So basically you get the animal fat, you can build the smelter, and you can put metal in, in it, turn it into metal ingots. And with the ingots, you can build the blacksmith workstation. And with the blacksmith workstation, you can make the digging tool. And the digging tool, not surprisingly, is how you dig uh, in the terrain. Now, for myself personally, and this is something that not everybody has to do or wants to do, but I like to have my first base pretty much be the base I'm going to be living in, and that I'm going to want to be underground. Being underground does a number of things for you. First of all, you're not so easily spotted by pe people just wandering by. Uh, if you're coming and going to the base, you know, you don't want to be vulnerable uh, in that respect either because, of course, you can be killed and looted. And when it comes to the raiding or sieging, an underground base is much more difficult to siege than an above ground base. Above ground, above ground bases can be, um, you know, meleeed down depending on their their the tier of their their walls, what they're made out of. Uh, they can be sieged with the various siege uh, equipment you saw in like those um, art, uh, those drawn shots while that was loading. There's like the catapult and the Gatling gun and so on. And of course, with explosives. Explosives will be the only way to get into the base if I build it underground. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, there's no point really in my... Uh, do I want to go in here? Nah. Fault damage exists. Um, so I do not want to harvest too many resources because before I have a respawn, if I died, I would just lose it. And death can happen in any number of ways. You know, fall damage, as I mentioned. Uh, there, There's wildlife, various mobs that could kill me. Uh, some of them are aggressive, so if I get close enough, they will they will just attack me, and some of them run faster than I do. Uh, bears, for example, are very dangerous and deadly early on. And, of course, there are other players. A player could kill me and take all my stuff. And, you know, if they didn't loot it uh, for whatever reason... Uh, if I spawn too far away, I would just be lost anyway. So you, you kind of want to not waste too much time and, and set in mind some objectives. So my objectives are get 20, uh, sorry, 200 cotton to make the bedroll and then find a source of animal fat, which in this case would be uh, animals that run slower than I do. Well, here's another sleeping player. If I wanted to, I could... Uh, Kill him, kill him and take his stuff, but he just has an armor piece which is inferior in stats to what I have, minus 20%, and his is 10. It says armor reduction. Really, that's damage reduction. It's the, it's kind of worded poorly, but that that means that attacks you know that I take will have their damage reduced by that percentage. Now, I don't see any deer, but the reason I want deer is because all other animals will either run for me and I can't catch them without ranged weapons. Or they won't run for me, they'll aggro, but they'll be too uh, difficult for me to kill at this stage in my uh, my gear. Um, bear specifically would be bad. Okay, so let's see. I'm looking for more cotton. Uh, the third thing I need is, of course, the base location. I don't want to build a base just anywhere. A base, uh, for me at least, is something that, that I want to build in a very specific spot. I like to build uh, on the slope of a mountain facing the water. Reason being that, you know, once you build a base underground, um, the, only really the doorway is is vulnerable to explosives. And if you build it facing the water, nobody can build a catapult or anything like that um, with which to seed you. So they would have to walk up to the door and drop the explosives. Uh, the way the system works is you have an influence chest which controls your area of influence which dictates uh, whether people can dig into the terrain or not they can't dig a tunnel right up flush to your underground base to the wall there's going to be a an area of denial for that uh, the influence chest also controls your um, taxation rage and rate so when you build a base and you put a chest in you can decide i think it's between zero and forty percent and that 
that is an amount of materials that anybody um, harvesting resources near your base will lose uh, to your taxation. It goes into your chest, which is good. It also is what uh, allows you to pay maintenance to prevent the base from decaying. Okay, so we have some animals, but these are faster than me. There, there's no way I, I'd be able to uh, catch up to them. So I'm just going to ignore those guys. Once I had a ranged weapon, I could farm those for resources, but I don't currently. Okay, so you see here we have a POI, point of interest on the right, which is a goblin fort. And there was a tower on the left, also inhabited by goblins. These points of interest are good sources of um, items, you know, gear and whatnot. Could be food, could be armor, could be all kinds of different things. Uh, the way the system in Reign of Dwarf works is that you build crafting stations and those will allow you to craft certain items. But some items you cannot craft until you find an example of them out in the world, either from a mob, a chest, or a player. And you research the item by putting it into the crafting station and, and you have a chance of learning its recipe, adding it to the list of things that could be crafted. Um, sometimes you'll have to upgrade the workstation as well in order to do that. So that's a pretty cool system. So I could go in here and with my existing gear try to defeat some of the mobs and, and maybe improve my oh, taking fire from an archer. Good thing I have a have a shield. The uh, combat music, of course, like many games, is a good indication that you've got aggro. So pay attention to that. You can turn it down, but if if you if you want, but don't turn it all the way off. Okay, so again, I'm looking for a base location. Uh, I want it to be, you know, on, on a mountainside, as I said. I also need it to be near some of the basic resources that I'm going to be using large quantities of to build the base, upgrade the base, um, build the workstations, and so on. And those, generally speaking, are going to be uh, wood, stone, and metal, starting out. So... Uh, wood you can pretty much find anywhere. Stone is is concentrated in some areas and less available in others, and metal is similar. The The game map features different biomes. Uh, so there's kind of like a temperate, foresty type biome. There's a desert biome. There's more of a hinterland or, or snowy type environment. And these can sometimes uh, be literally bordering on each other. In fact, you can even see the uh, stitching on the map. It's a very stark line. Ah, there we go. Look, there's a... It's an example of a, a glowing item that at night becomes easily visible. In this case, it's not a player with a torch, but it's a, it's a mob. That's a, a spider whose abdomen is glowing. It's aggressive, and I might be able to kill it with this gear, but there's no point. It doesn't, it doesn't give me anything uh, that I need at this stage, so I'm just going to ignore it. Um, there are also uh, many different other mobs that are aggressive. Uh, the, the mob diversity is actually surprisingly large. There's, you know, animals and creatures of different types um, just in the open world. And then, of course, the different POI. The POI include the tower you see on the left, the uh, fort that I showed you earlier. There's also an underground dungeon, which includes a boss. And then there's... Let's see... Can I craft it? Yes. So I'm able to craft the the uh, bedroll now, having collected 200 cotton. I, I like to put the bedroll on my bar so that if I get into trouble, I can just drop it down. And then if I die, um, I'll hopefully you know, be able to respawn nearby and, and recover my stuff if I wasn't killed by a player. If you're killed by a mob, of course, then you'd get your stuff back and no harm done. You can pick up the uh, bedrolls, you can name them, so you, you can say, you know, northeast shoreline, you know, southern mountains, etc., just to have an idea of, of where you are, because again, there is no map. Uh, the bedrolls do show up on the on the compass at the top of the screen now. They didn't do that in testing, so that's a nice addition. Uh, specifically, if you're trying to find your base, uh, your base won't show up on the map, because there is none, <laughs> but they won't show up on the radar, but your, your bedroll will. So that's that's good. Okay, so now that I have uh, my spawn in my inventory in the form of the bedroll, I can start looking for animals which will provide me with the animal fat that I need. Animal fat is what I need to build the smelter 
and that will allow me to uh, smelt the ingots to make the blacksmithing table and create the digging tool. Uh, the, the, the choice of base site is, you know, somewhat important. You could build just anywhere and you don't necessarily have to build uh, your first immediate base for like safe storage and whatnot in the same location as your underground base. But I prefer to do it all at once because if you just, if you die and you, and you just respawn somewhere else, you're going to lose all your progress. You're going to have difficulty getting back to your base anyway. So I like to have everything all in one shot. This way, if I die, well... I haven't wasted time collecting, you know, thousands of raw materials that I'm not going to be using. So what I'm looking for is a spot near the coast, hopefully with a high mountain, preferably with some trees to help uh, hide the entrance. It's it's uh, an interesting process of building an underground base because, of course, you don't want to uh, tunnel up to the surface again, like have a break in the ceiling. Um, and that just defeats the purpose of, you know, of building underground and hiding and whatnot. Okay, so here we have a couple POI. I can see there's a, there's a, there's a shoreline, so this is looking promising. I just need to find some animals. Again, specifically deer, because deer is the only uh, animal, fat-giving animal that you can outrun. Everything else you'll need a ranged weapon for. I could get a ranged weapon. Um, before building my base, there's different ways of doing that, but it's just not, it's not as, as sure a thing as having a source that you can just melee down. Let's see. Okay. So see that thing? It looks like an above ground cave on the hillside. That's the entrance to the dungeon. Uh, dungeons in Reign of Dwarf actually include a boss with, you know, traditional MMO boss style mechanics. It does all kinds of different telegraph moves and you have to respond appropriately appropriately. Um, generally speaking, it's something you'd want to do as a group, although I have seen people solo it. Uh, there are other types of POI that'll be added. Uh, the update that's coming, there's a, a game update that's coming on the 21st of December, so not, not long off now, which will include a server wipe and uh, all kinds of additional uh, content being added, and bug fixes and changes and whatnot. Um, if you're thinking of playing the game, actually, this is a good time to to uh, to buy it and and get in with when the wipe happens the uh, the game's actually on sale right now um, so that's another reason to to pick it up pick it up uh, at this time so you can see the stitching I mentioned you'll see the the, the border between two biomes it's uh, it's a bit stark but you know it's it's not the uh, the game's focus you know to look uh, look fantastic it looks good enough and, and the pvp is the real real focus of the game um, it can help you orient yourself though so it's not a, a bad thing uh, mushrooms that i'm picking up you'll notice and, and cotton which you know the purpose of for the bedrolls the mushrooms are a source of food food will heal you and restore your food and thirst meters um, there is a short cooldown timer on eating food so you can't just keep doing it over and over there are other items you can use to heal yourself as well, such as bandages, but starting out, I'm just limited to these uh, mushrooms. Okay, so we're getting to the point where I think I have enough basic stuff that I can start hunting out my base location. I have some requirements. As mentioned, I'd like to be near a mountain, a slope facing the water. But the, the proximity of deer is important because I don't want to be running halfway across the map with the animal fat in my uh, inventory and risk dying. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. I noticed there's a POI. Maybe I can go in there and snag a, a ranged weapon. Um, the, some of the goblins are archers and they'll have bows potentially, which will mean that I don't have to limit myself to deer. So this is the first in a series of videos. I'll be taking a look at Reign of Dwarf. I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you give the game a try. And um, as always, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. See you in the next one.